The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 319 Full Foible Amber took an enormous breath, smiled gamely, and let it out with a sigh. All right, she said, facing the room full of foals she had suddenly found herself in charge of. Should we, um, get to know each other? Snow glanced up from his magazine, quickly pointing a hoof around the room. Hey, city's the oldest. Don't know where Jam Charts is. I'm Snowshoe, but call me Snow. We're twins. Log loss is dim but reliable. Bricks and Glitter are also twins. Vendor's Thumper. Don't ask Jam Charts why she's called that. She thinks it's hilarious. After her, you get Poncho and Van Boardbiter and Barry, who are the youngest twins. Darky is the youngest, and Mom hasn't named a new one. I'll stay out of your mane. Uh, Amber stared at the room of foals and half of them stared back. Could you run that by me again? Snow was already back to his magazine, though. Hazy trotted forward, two of the youngest stacked on her back. Do you know anything about what's happening? She asked. Mom hasn't been able to say much other than that we left Iron Ridge. And we're, well... Most of the foals who were old enough to nodded in agreement, as if an undercurrent of worry had been given permission to calmly break to the surface. Amber swallowed. Well, I don't know much about your situation, but this is Riverfall, and I heard they brought you here because your house in Ironweed was gone? Starlight? Starlight shrugged. I just did what Maple said she wanted to do. It was her idea. Who was that who looked like Mom? A small, chipper unicorn filly asked. Do you know her? If it's mine, Maple's friend Willow Amber started to explain before she was cut off. Hey! A mud-colored cold growl from atop a dresser, barking the room into silence. I'm not belly aching! What is this? He flung himself in a giant flopping arc, sending the unicorn screaming to get out of the way. Booyah! Briggs, the filly grumbled, landing on her side with a gasp and a pout. I will sit on him to restore order, a thick, well-built colt announced, lifting its unshorn hooves and plodding dangerously toward where Briggs lay. Restore order, a tiny filly chanted, grabbing a wooden block and slamming it against the floor to make noise. <laughs> Amber darted across the room and seized the weapon. This is a nice ship, she insisted, reprimanding the filly. Please don't damage the ship. The filly screamed in her face. Then two diapered foals on white chocolate's bed started bawling. Every pony, shut up, Snow exclaimed, slamming his magazine shut and using his hoof for a bookmark. I'm just getting to the gut part and can't enjoy it with all you making noise. Snow, give me that, Hayseed insisted, reaching out a hoof for the magazine as the foals continued to wail. What? No! Snow snatched it away defensively. Get your own stories! Hayseed rolled her eyes. Chewing on it made Board Biter happy last time, and we need to quiet them down somehow. Snow? Looked aghast. Meanwhile, Briggs fought off his oppressor and reared up, beating his chest in victory. Booyah! Hey, yellow bear! I bet you can't take me to wow! He was promptly tackled again. I have no idea what I'm doing, Amber whispered, eyes pin Briggs as the hot pink filly who had nearly been flattened earlier took shelter between her legs. Starlight growled, lighting her horn. She wasn't sure she'd be able to keep it up for more than a flicker, but maybe a bluff would work. I will freeze you all in three seconds! Suddenly, there came a knock at the door. Curiously, everyone but the crying fool stopped what they were doing to look, Briggs's ear in his captor's mouth. The door cracked open and a white, hooded face peered through. Is everything going fine in here? Mitriona asked. No, Amber whimpered, voice cracking as the foals continued to cry. No, it's not. Like a strong, gentle wind, Matriona blew the door aside, gliding across the room with a robe flowing so gracefully that she might have been flying. She reached the bed, and with no struggle or even effort was laying, not even bouncing from the impact as she curled next to the foals. Three long, elegant feathers slipped from a fold in a cloak, just a very tip of her wing and brushed each foal in turn as she leaned towards them, muzzle down and eyes closed. The foals stopped crying. How did you do that? Amber asked, amazed as Mitriona carefully closed her eyelids. The entire room held in silence. Even Willow can't calm her foals that fast. Instinct, Mitriona replied and left it at that. Starlight blinked. Instinct. I wish Mom had that much instinct, Hayseed whispered. Is there anything you can teach me for when she's not here like now, or... Mitriona sighed. This room was recently used for harboring injured soldiers, and they don't like the way it smells. 
The fragrance I'm wearing overpowers that and makes them feel at peace. As she sat there, one of the foals started sniffling again, and she instantly calmed them by bringing a feather back to their nose. How do you know, though? Ember squinted. Can you just read them or something? Will it work on bricks or thumper? Hayseed asked hopefully. They make a racket for the sake of making a racket. The cure for that is attention, Matryona said. Starlight, Amber, if you are helping their mother, you can go. I will care for things here. Amber needed no second bidding, nudging Starlight with her tail and hurrying out of the room. And that's everything that happened while Chocolate sighed, standing on the ship deck and hanging her head before Maple and Willow. She looked absolutely miserable, and every second spent before Willow's calm demeanor and dignified posture cowed her even more. I didn't mean to intrude on your life here. Starlight just told me to come, and there was a teleporting unicorn, and I was scared and not thinking, and Willow touched her chin with a hoof, lifting it back so they were face to face. My life can handle an intrusion or two, she invited, concerned and gentle. And it looks like you need it. Don't be sorry. Suddenly, Amber tumbled out onto the deck, started close behind her. Whew! Amber ran a hoof across her brow, laying on her back and staring up at the blue sky. Someone else is watching your foals. I couldn't do that after all. Kids are cute, but not my talent. Hey, girls, she waved feebly. Maple gave her and Starlet a strange smile, looking like she was still on edge about Willow and White Chocolate meeting. Hi, Starlight, Amber, she greeted, trotting stiffly over. They've been talking and I've... you haven't missed much. So, could I get to deal with this one more time? Amber asked, sitting up and scratching her neck. She's her husband's old wife from Anridge and he left her to come here. And she looks exactly like her? That's pretty much it, Maple admitted. Right now, we're trying to... I think Willow is trying to convince everyone that she's not mad for white chocolate coming. Myself included. I just... As soon as this part is over, they're probably going to talk to Theron and... Whatever he does, I remember what this was like for me, and what would you do if you were him? Amber folded her ears. I don't know his situation. Sighing, Maple trotted toward the gangplank, the area below clear and devoid of ponies. If he felt like me when he left, if he's better now, or if he isn't, he sent us to look for her, so he still cares about her. I don't know what he feels towards Willow. I've been realizing lately that my idea of how love and marriage and family works might not be all there is to it. Now that I've seen how citizens here aren't just reclusive and different, but have reasons for being how they are. But that doesn't help me understand anything. If I were him, I'd curl up and want to run away or not try anything at all. Amber slung a hoof over her shoulder with a grin. Good thing you're you then, right? Maple chuckled back. Mm-hmm. Behind them, Willow came trotting up, white chocolate at her side. We're going, Willow announced. Back to my house first. If things go the way I hope, we can go to Maple's after. White chocolate, Maple asked, noting the other mare's watery eyes. You fine with this? I've given up, White chocolate murmured. I can't do what's best for myself and my foals. Whatever I'm worth, I trust myself in your hooves. If you think it's best, I'll come along. End of chapter 319